Hello Internet and welcome back to my channel. Or in case you are new here, allow me to introduce myself real quick. My name is Matthew Anupi Tamatama, I'm sort of linked in the channel, channel well by Tamatama, someone teaching. That was, uh, was kind of alright. Today, I am very excited to be showing you guys a sponsored video. As you may or may not know, the majority of the content on this YouTube channel is sponsored by either me or by the lovely Patreon fam. Thanks guys. Now, today's video is funded by PayPal, the payment website. You can thank them for this tutorial because when they approached me a couple of weeks ago, I was like, cool, let's make a video, but I want to give something of value to the people watching it because when it's just a sponsored video and you just try and flog something to the crowd, I'm not all about that. So today I'm teaching you how to shoot long exposure photographs on any camera. Yes, even your camera phone. In fact, I'll be using my camera phone to show you how to shoot it on any other camera. What you need is a little tripod, which we will be purchasing using PayPal. How convenient. PayPal is the easy way to pay online at thousands of stores. Then what you need is obviously a camera or a camera phone. I've got a S9 Plus, which means that it's got pro mode, so you can actually have full manual control over all your settings. If you don't have one of those phones, you can download an app, for example, Camera FV5, which is a photography app with the worst name possible because I just can't seem to pronounce it properly. FB5. Anyways or a uh, mini camera, like a little compact thingy, or a full professional DSLR camera. All you need to do is be able to control three settings, the three main pillars of photography, which is ISO, the sensitivity of your sensor, aperture, the size of the tunnel through which the light goes to hit your sensor, and shutter speed, which is the length or the duration of which the light will be hitting the sensor. So controlling all those three, we will be focusing on the shutter speed, obviously, which is going to determine how long the light streaks will be. Earlier this week, I went out into the cold to have a look at Vivid Sydney, which is the world's most beautiful light festival. I went out to Vivid Sydney on my trusty scooter to shoot some photos, and when I arrived at my spot overlooking the circular quay, which is where all the boats, all the ferries go out to uh, explore the Sydney Harbour, I guess. First up, what you have to do is obviously whip out your camera, and then you gotta find a nice composition and use the uh, the grid or the, the golden ratio rule to figure out which one works best if you want to keep it really simple maybe zoom in a bit to isolate your subject and then you're gonna set up your settings now because we want long exposures so long shutter speeds we're gonna use the two other pillars of photography of exposure to extend the shutter time so the sensitivity of your sensor, you're going to bring that down to as low as possible. On my, on my phone that was 50, on my camera that's going to be 100. And this means that the sensitivity of the photograph sensor, is that a word, photograph sensor? The photo sensor is really low, so it needs more light to hit it. It needs to be hit more intensely to properly expose the photo. So keep that low, then your aperture, if you can stop it down, which is the tunnel through which the light goes to hit the sensor, if you stop that down, the smaller the hole, the less light hits the sensor. That makes sense, right? I'm trying to keep this really easy and really simple so everyone understands it. Low ISO sensitivity, small, tiny gap through which the light goes, those two will make you expose longer in your uh, shutter speed setting. So try doing that then make sure that you don't overdo it so your photo doesn't get all overexposed, which is too bright and then you can't draw it back. Little side tip, if you shoot raw photos, if you have the option to do that, or DNG, digital negatives, you will have way more room in post-production to edit your photos. So if you do manage to overexpose or underexpose it, you can actually bring that back to a properly exposed photo. Now, as I was shooting there, I wasn't in love with the view, but it was good enough. I turned around, as you should always do when shooting a photo, to have a look at what's on the other side. And as I turned around, I saw the road and I saw these buildings lit up. So I was like, you know what? Let's try shooting that because with long exposure photos, it's always fun when you have light trails going through it in your composition. So set up the camera once again, found a nice composition, waited for a bus to come by. I say I waited, I was actually, I just lucked out. I hit the button, the uh, thing started timing down, which is another little tip because if you click or you tap your screen to take the photo, you're shaking the camera and in a long exposure, you want it to be as sturdy as possible so nothing becomes motion blurred. That makes a lot of sense, right? That's why we have that little tripod. So it counts down and then a massive bus drives by and I end up with this photo. And so yeah, I was pretty, uh, pretty damn happy with how that photo turned out. I took a few more, but nothing topped that one with the bus. So as per usual, you can do all the prep work you want, but some of the greatest photos are down all to luck, pretty much. 
then we can take that photo and we can go process it further, which I did. I touched it up a little bit to uh, make it pop a little bit more. That's still a thing people say, right? We want to make it pop a little bit more. If you head out and shoot some long exposures yourself, I would love it if you could uh, share that online and use the hashtag Matjo's long exposure. That way I can click on that hashtag, be it on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and I can actually look at your photos. How good is that? So you, I might find them, so you don't have to send them to me in DMs or whatever. I'll just click on the hashtag. It's the same with Matt Joe's Hyperlapse. I've been looking into who's been posting what, and it's awesome to see so many people post all this content that they uh, shot because they learned something from one of my tutorials. I think that's just absolutely fabulous. So if you post, use Matt Joe's Long Exposure, and hopefully I will find your photos and leave a comment. How bloody good. Thank you so much, PayPal, for sponsoring this educational video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. If you didn't, maybe next time. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next video. And the point is, and so yeah, <clears throat> and so yeah, <laughs> wow, you're 28 man, come on. Cool, let's, uh, let's reshoot the whole video because um, the audio was <laughs> way too loud on the previous one. It was clipping and ruined and I'm an amateur you're making over 777 videos on this channel most of which actually not most of which but half of which no about a third of which are hidden um, you still make mistakes so uh, yeah welcome to my life hope you're doing well today whoa Ooh, here's the uh, here's the light let's see, let's see that it's pretty much like it was before cool 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 cool, cool. Testing with audio. No more email sounds. No sounds whatsoever. Hopefully no one rings me as we're shooting this. We? It's just me. How bloody good. All right. <sighs> la, 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 la. And a one. And a two. And a here we go. YouTube time, baby. Hello, Internet. I always do at the start of a sentence. How about that?